back you beautiful people and welcome to a one-nighter. I'm going bike packing. Yes, again, I'm going bike packing, but I've got some interesting bags on my bike, which I'll explain when I get to camp. But I'm in a random location. I'm in Sherborne to start off this bike packing trip right next to the cathedral in the town. And this cathedral is super old, right? Here's a bit of history about this cathedral. In AD 90, 998, they started teaching the ethnic of monks and that became the future of this town, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty old, isn't it? That is, that is old. But also, randomly, this place wasn't a target in the war, but in 1940, it got hit by an air raid. Uh, the, the target was not here. It was actually in Yeovil at Westlands Airfield. But there we go. This place was hit by bombs. Shame. No major destruction. I'm glad they didn't destroy this. Right. I'm armed with a hammer, but I'll explain again. Hammer. Bags. Random bags. My Garmin is going to tell me where I need to go. I'm excited for this. It's very wet and miserable, but uh, come with me on this little journey. I've got some history. Enjoy. Wow, very, very wet. It's gonna be uh, exciting. The bags I've got, right, I bought them. Cheap. They say they're roll bags and they're waterproof. So we'll see if my sleeping bag is dry. I am going somewhere very friendly, which is good. Out of the town, into the countryside. Nice. So I've come up to get a shot of me cycling past. And look at this tree has grown around this fence. Look at that. Straight through. That is old. Pretty is pretty much the same age as the cathedral, man. No, it's not. I'm lying. Anyway, I'm gonna get this incredible shot. And I'll mosey on. gate is really old like the cathedral everything is going to be based on the cathedral old i've come out to the open and it is sideways wind muddy i'm uh well, about an hour in my feet are wet <laughs> wait i thought it was supposed to be spring man warm weather but no, it's blustery gales. Woo! Oh. I'm going to keep saying it all day, but I am amongst one of the most indigenous tree in Dorset. The apple tree, Dorset, land of the cider drink. Look at that. Yep, I'm heading down to my auntie and uncle's. They actually don't like being called auntie and uncle. <laughs> Sorry, Penny and Oliver. I'm off to the cider farm for the night because I just want to give these bags a good run for their money. Now, Rich would think different. He would say that Somerset is the home of cider. Nah, I disagree. I disagree with you, Rich. I think Dorset is the home of cider. Anyway, because my auntie and uncle there. There we go. Dorset Nectar, we're coming. Right, we've hit a bit of 
your boots. Like I said, here yeah, I'm cold now. The wind is just howling. Side wind, side rain, everything. And I'm gonna go up that. In front of me, I'm gonna go up there. On the other side of this hill uh, is called a place. Is a place called Cern Abyss. And Cern Abyss is quite well known for a massive guy cut out on the side of a hill with chalk, like chalk lines, so it's white. So there's white lines on the hill with this massive dong hanging out. <laughs> no. This hill is a slog, absolute slog. It's soft, muddy. Oh, I'm pushing up here. I'm pushing up this hill. Bit of pushing, bit of mud, bit of pedaling, bit of filming. We've made it to the top. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I can't wait for a sandwich. I need a sandwich. Whew. Lunch, I think. Lunch at Cern Abbott. Woo! I nearly fell over. Muddy. <sighs> Them lanes. Frick, it's, it's muddy. Anyway. All right, I've seeked some, uh, seeked some shelter underneath these trees. I can't even talk, my mouth is so cold. Anyway, there he is. He's over there. It is not agreed how old the Cern Abbas giant is, but recent archeology span archaeological oh, archaeological <laughs> they've got it dates the figure to around 700 to 1100 a.d which suggests the giant was first made by the late saxons that is flipping old who would want to go up there and just cut a big man with his thing out but he's a sign of fertility so i'm not going to hang around for very long i'm going to go down into the village and get myself some lunch. I'm guessing my sandwich is full of water, so I don't want that. So I'm gonna go get a cup of tea, hot cup of tea. I hope we go warm up the cockles. <laughs> See you later, Sir Abbas. Giant, giants, giants, giants. Yeah, strong. Hell of a giant, that. Hell of a giant. if they're gonna let me in. I'm dirty and muddy. Maybe I could have my tea outside. A question I can ask, a question I can ask. cup of tea. Right, just looking at the maps. <sighs> 17 miles still to go and in this weather to the cider farm, Dorset Nectar. So look, we're here. Got some tea in me, got some cake. I'm just gonna wrap, get to the cider farm and uh, set up camp before it gets too dark. Cause it's three o'clock now and I uh, don't want it to be any more later than that. I want a shower. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> we are here. Finally made it out of those clouds. That was disgusting. I thought I just needed to get my head down and get out of it. It was freezing up there. I didn't like it. Let's go into the uh, orchard and let's set up camp. I've got some beans for dinner. <laughs> Baked beans for dinner. Can't wait to have some beans. The weather's got worse. The weather's totally got worse. I tried setting up the hammock, it's not working. But then Dante's just texted me and he said, what well, he's offered, for me to sleep in the barn. So I'm definitely gonna go sleep in the barn. All right, get some cider. This is Dante. I would say you're my cousin. Yeah. You're my cousin. Nearly. Everyone, Dante, Dante, everyone. Hello. I've come to get some ciders. All right. I will, could I have uh, a, the honey bubble one, please? Oh. And here's the honey bubble cider. Thank you very much, thank you. This is gonna warm me up. I'll see you in the morning. Slept there, really, really cozy compared to sleeping in the hammock in the rain. Let's get on the road, but before we get on the road, let me uh, talk about the kit, because it is budget. Right, let's talk about the kit I use to carry all my stuff. Now, I went in the budget because I wanted to see how cheap I can go bikepacking. And uh, to be honest, it's under 50 pounds. Bar your sleeping bag and whatever equipment that you want to sleep in. But bikepacking kit, straps are a good thing, or a must really, because you need to strap your bags to your bike. I went for these Flex Plus, so I bought four of them. They're quite, quite expensive. It came in at 25 pounds. They are super useful. They can basically hold your hammer on your bike if you wanted to carry a hammer, but you don't really need them. You can just use these kind of straps. I bought six, it came in a, in a pack of six, and they were 13 pounds. I only used three, so you got multiple straps if you needed to. The bag I used on the front on my handlebars is a 10 litre one. Super durable, some sort of plastic and that everything inside is dry after yesterday. You don't want something too long because you don't want it to approach onto your brakes and stuff and your levers because well, you just get uncomfortable and it can catch you out when you're riding down some nasty stuff. So I went for a nice short stubby fat one, 10 liters. This was holding in my my hammock and a few other items that I wanted to use. So that is the front one. Now that front is perfect to carrying a load. It's good you can carry everything there. This one right here is the back loader. Now on the rear you don't really want to use something that's too big. So I go for five to seven liters of luggage on the rear. Anything bigger is going to be too heavy for the rear and it's basically like a dog wagging his tail. The whole bike's gonna wobble, especially when it gets a bit of a wobble on. With this one, I found that it was hitting my thighs whilst pedaling. So I'm guessing it's a bit too wide or anything, but anyway, I saw this on the internet and using the dry bag when the roller, these clips here, you can basically undo it and you can clip it round your seat post and that will stop a little bit of the wobble and then with the straps it kind of goes under the seat rails there and then you can pull it really tight and it acts as a mud guard now this bag came in at 10 pounds which is super cheap and it's super dry inside and in here is carrying my burner my coffee maker a spare jacket uh my micro sleeping bag and a few bits and pieces and my toiletries so out of all of this it costs me Roughly 45 pounds. That is pretty good going. I'm not gonna lie, this rear one is a faff to get on. If you have any hard items like your mug or your burner or anything, it just gets annoying. That's probably one downfall to this is if you had a specific bike pairing, carrying rear bag, it has like a cradle you can put your stuff in. This one doesn't, and it's annoying. <laughs> this 
This little trail I'm riding up is muddy. And look, my track has turned it into a little stream. Look at that. <laughs> it was muddy as anything. Doesn't look like this trail gets used much. Bit overgrown. Oh, look at that. Bit overgrown. hill is steep oh man hang on I've just come from all the way down there you can actually see the little wind turbine just behind that is Dorset Nectar came through this valley across the main road there up this horrible steep slippery hill I fell like three times that is Bridport beautiful town good fish and chips but we're not going that way we're going over this brow and I feel like if we get to the top of this hill, I can see the ocean. And then from there, I'm going right and we're going to Lyme Regis. And there is a good cafe. I think I'll smack some rocks. See if I can find a fossil. <laughs> I brought that hammer with me all the way to go and smash some rocks. <sighs> Let's go. No more falling, please, Blake. No more falling. There's one thing I forgot to mention is that if you're running a tail pack, like a budget one, like the setup I'm using right here, uh, on a full suspension, it's, I feel like it's not gonna work because with the suspension compressing, it's gonna just completely crash into your bag and then rip a hole in it, and obviously you've ruined it. I guess this system here is good for a hard tail if you wanna go budget. But I'm actually having some issues with this. It keeps coming loose, it keeps wobbling quite a lot. I think it's down to strategically packing that bag so you can get it nice and firm. Right, I can smell the ocean. I can smell the ocean. packing it doesn't have to be expensive Hi. I, just, I can see the sea it's over there I think I've got one major climb to go and then I'm into Lyme Regis find a rock or two and uh, crack it open. Welcome to Lyme Regis. successful 
there we are. Two of them. One, two. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Park Tools, for that. Woo! So there we have it. I didn't just bring the hammer for nothing. I brought it to find a fossil and I did. I sat down and I found one. There we go. Bike packing on a budget. Yeah. That, there it is, right there. It can be done. So hopefully this has inspired you to head out there and go bike packing. Get some dry bags, get some straps, put your clothes in there, put your sleeping kit and hit the road. But if you want to ride this, this route of mine that I've done it is quite, um, it's quite demanding in the wet, but it's linked in the description down below, like I've said, on GMBN's commute. Go on there, make sure you do it in the summer because uh, now it's, uh, it's spring, but it's not spring, is it? No, it's freezing. Anyway, I found a fossil. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'll uh, see ya. Cup of tea. Or find more fossils. Let's go find more fossils. <laughs>